Hello and welcome to video two. Today's topic is going to be about arcs, chords, and tangent properties. Just as before, feel free to pause the video at any time in order to go back and review any concept that was unclear for you. In today's lessons, your theorems are going to be written in these blue or purple or green bubbles and then we'll work through some examples so that you'll have some to follow on your own. So our first theorem is that if two chords on the same circle are congruent, then the arcs and central angles defined by them will be congruent. So let's take a look at our first example. We're going to use this figure to help us answer these questions. So based on the diagram, the first thing I want you to do is identify the two congruent chords. You can do that by looking for the congruent symbols here and here. So that means that CD is congruent to chord AB. So based on those congruent chords, what two arcs have to be congruent? Well, the arcs that are determined by those chords, which in this case happens to be chord a, B here, and chord C, D here. What are the measures of their arcs? Well, if you take a look, you know that arc A, C is 20, arc B, D is 220, so we have used up 240 degrees out of the total 360 degrees. So that leaves 120 degrees that needs to be divided evenly between the two congruent chords. So therefore, each of those arcs must be 60 degrees. In our second example, we are told that the length of chord PS is 12 and the length of chord TR is 15. We're asked to find the length of chord QR. So in order to do so, we have to examine the measures of the arcs and try to identify a chord that cuts off an arc that is congruent to the arc cut off by chord QR. So the arc cut off by QR is here and it has a measure of 70 degrees. If we can locate another 70 degree arc, we'll know that we have a congruent chord. So as we go around, there's a 60 degree arc, there's a 20, there's a 50, but oh, from S over to P makes up a 70 degree arc. That chord, PS, cuts off that 70 degree arc, so therefore PS and QR are congruent, and so since PS is 12, QR must also be 12. In example three, we're asked to find the length of HI. I know the lengths of the segments associated with these other three angles, so if I can find the measure of this arc, I should be able to match it up to one of the others. A quick calculation shows me that 78 plus 91 plus 113 adds up to 282 degrees out of my total 360. When I subtract that away, I end up with 78 degrees for the measure of arc HI. If I examine this diagram, the other arc that is congruent to that is arc GH, and that is cut off by chord GH. Chord GH has a length of 9, so therefore chord HI must also have a length of 9. In our next slide, we're introduced to our next theorem, which states if a radius is perpendicular to a given chord, then it bisects the chord and its arc. So let's see how we can utilize this particular theorem. Let's take a look at example four. In example four, we're told that radius AD is perpendicular to chord BC. We're also told that from A to E is 12, and we know that the length of, of any radius is 13. We're asked to find the lengths of the following segments. Well, if every radius is 13, and I've used uh, from segment A, AE is 12, then that means that ED must have a length of 1. From A to C, 
is this segment here, which is a radius. That must be a constant value of 13. Using similar reasoning, I know from A to B must also be 13. And now it asks me to find the length of EB. Well, remember this is perpendicular here, so we actually have a right triangle. We have a hypotenuse length of 13, a leg of 12, which means that this is actually a Pythagorean triple. The length from segment E to B is five units long. If E to B is five units long, then from E to C must also be five units long. And from B to C must be twice that, which is 10. So in these types of problems, you will often have to draw in the radius and then use Pythagorean theorem or perhaps special right triangles to help you calculate lengths. Since the theorem says it also bisects uh, its arc, here's an example that uses some arc measures. We know that the measure of major arc CFB is 220 degrees. That leaves 140 degrees left in the circle for the measure of arc BC. So we know that BC has to be 140. The measure of angle CAB, well, CAB would be this angle here. It happens to be a central angle. We learned last video that the measure of the central angle is exactly the same as the measure of its arc. So therefore, angle CAB must also be 140 degrees. Angle BAD is exactly half of this angle. We know that this radius bisects this arc, so therefore it also bisects that angle. So that would be 70 degrees. And therefore, arc CD must also end up being 70 degrees. In this particular example, we're told that the chord length, SQ, is 12 units long. We also know that from the center of the circle to the point where it's perpendicular, segment AT, is 8 units long. And we're asked to find the length of segment AR. The first thing I want you to notice is that segment AR is actually a radius of this circle. And even though it doesn't look like it, AR and AS are actually congruent to each other because they're both radii of the same circle. So since this radius is perpendicular to this chord, you know that it bisects the chord. So that means from S to T has to be six units long. Again, we have a right triangle, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem. And if you're familiar with your Pythagorean triples, you'll know that 6, 8, 10 is the length of a right triangle. And so we know the radius length is 10, which means that segment AR must also be 10. For this diagram down here, we're told that a central angle measure is 60 degrees and the length of the radius is 6. We are asked to find the length of segment AD the length of segment CD, and then the, the measure of arc AB. So using the knowledge of our special right triangles, we have the length of the hypotenuse, which is 6. So the short leg must be half of that at 3, and the long leg must be the short leg times the square root of 3. So that means that CD is 3 units long, AD must be 3 roots of 3 units long, and the measure of arc AB has to be twice as big as this arc here because the radius bisects that chord, which means it also bisects its arc. So if the central angle is 60, then arc AD is 60. Um, this arc here must also be 60 for a total of 120 degrees. Our next theorem states that if two chords are congruent, then they are equidistant from the center of the circle. So let's go ahead and use this in a couple of examples. Here we're asked to find the values of x and y. We are shown that um, the two chords are equidistant from the center of the circle. 
Based on our theorem, we know that they must be congruent. Our previous theorem said that if a radius was drawn perpendicular to a chord, that it bisected the chord. So therefore, x has to be 8. And if x is 8, then that means that this entire chord is 16. But this entire chord is congruent to this entire chord, which means that y must also be 16. Continuing on with example 9, I've taken the liberty of labeling our given information. We're asked to find the length of chord HJ, which is right here. So in order to be able to do that, it might be helpful to know how far it is from this vertex, which I believe is P, to J. We know that every radius has a length of 5, so O to J must also be 5. This forms a right triangle. Again, use your Pythagorean theorem. You can figure out that that missing side is 3. Because this radius is drawn perpendicular to this chord, this must also be 3. So h to j has to be 6 units in length. A tangent is a line or a portion of a line that intersects a circle in exactly one point. In this particular diagram, this is the tangent line, and the point that the circle and the line both share is known as the point of tangency. It turns out that if you have a radius and you draw it to the point of tangency, that the radius is actually perpendicular to the tangent line at that point. So we know that that's a 90 degree angle. I forgot to put this theorem in its own little bubble, so let's go ahead and add it right now. This is a very powerful theorem, knowing that when a radius is drawn to the point of tangency, that it forms a right angle and has a measure of 90 degrees, is going to be very helpful for you in the future. One last property of tangents involves tangent segments from the same exterior point. And we know if we have tangent segments from the same exterior point that they must be congruent. So when we look at this diagram, our tangent segments are here from the exterior point C to the tangent point A and from C to tangent point B. Because they originate from the same external point C, we know that core segment AC and tangent segment BC must be congruent. So that means then that 3y has to equal 5y minus 28. From here, this is an easy algebra to solve. Um, so we subtract 5y. We have negative 2y is equal to negative 28. So therefore, y has to be 14. If y is 14, then to solve for the length of BC, we would just do 3 times 14, end up with 42. And so therefore, AC has a length of 42, and CB must also have a length of 42. This concludes our second video. Hope these worked out examples are beneficial to you as you begin your own practice.